Yeah, I think we're sitting at six o'clock back there. So we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. We'll start with the pledge and then a prayer with Commissioner Davis. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Lord, we come to you tonight thanking you for the many blessings you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day we've had. We ask that you be with our world today as we know we're going through turmoil and strife. We ask you to be with this commission as we make decisions on our community. Help us make the right ones. God lead and direct us in all we say and do. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good job. I'd like to welcome everyone out tonight. Man, this is a big crowd. We're not used to this. Usually it's George and Mike. So <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, first item of business approval of minutes. Make a motion to approve minutes. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is the bills. I make a motion we accept the bills. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is discussion on the one. Okay. Uh, I give everybody a copy of it. There you can call this one. Let me flip over so you can see what, what it actually is. On the quantity, is that the number of hours? Yes. They'll spend on each. Mm -hmm. This is on the our backup sanitation truck. Had the uh, is this work already been done? high pressure pump and the injectors replaced. It's rather, it's rather hard to make a comparison because these are so vague where this is in detail. Mm -hmm. We have additional quotes too if you'd like to see those that, that are a little more, you know, he, whenever he obtained the quotes, he specified everything that yeah. we were going to do. How did they come, how did these other places come up with these? How did these two places come up with theirs? I'm assuming when a mechanic does a job, the local mechanics here, I don't know about the large equipment, they go by children so many hours of sets for changing the alternator or whatever. 
uh, and you know, Chad, been, Chad was trying to work with us. I, I just felt like the price was out in left field a little too far. And his first initial thought, thought was he can knock $1,000 off the bill. And I told him I still couldn't approve that, that it would have to come to the city commission meeting. And the, the figure that I had shot back to Chad uh, was $4,087.73. And where I had come up with that was the two quotes that Chad had sent me, or Sarah had sent me, I took that in consideration with the two quotes that I had received and divided them before and got that figure. Then I had a Chad working back on to where he had performed the final testing and the uh, $170 fee as well for the uh, okay. for, for, for the parts and the uh, uh, ready to close the tool. As far as the quotes about going by a book, the dealers going by a book and stuff, there's no such book in the heavy equipment world, so you know no further things. There's no such book. Each dealer makes their own quotes. What they do, and the only reason I know it's worked for three different dealers, you watch the quote videos when you start with every one of them. What they do, this engine set on the floor. And just like changing the pump or the injectors, this engine set on the floor. They've got all their tools set on the cart behind them. And they timed this guy. It's a new engine, by the way, clean, sitting in the floor in my in piece of equipment. And they start, they time this guy to start and say if he's changing the pump, then they'll time him and however long it takes to, to change that pump so it to go by. Because, and the reason for that is, I guess it's kind of crooked on their part, but the dealers, when you bring something in for warranty, the dealers pay for that. And then they submit that warranty to uh, the manufacturer and the manufacturer pays that dealer for that warranty. Well, if they can say that it takes 10 hours to change a pump and it takes 15, well, the manufacturer just got away with five hours free labor. Does that make sense? Was that clear on that? Or? Mm -hmm. In the book that he's referring to, they do use on automotive. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's how automotive does it. The heavy equipment builds on the actual hours that it takes, not, you know. So if you take your car in to be um, worked on and it takes them five hours, but the, an automotive mechanic's book says 10 hours, they charge you for 10 hours. That's Whereas we charge you for actual time. And that's just the difference in the industry. I wouldn't mind seeing what you have there. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, what I was going to ask was, I just, who were they, who were your two folks by? If you don't mind me asking. Two's from the cab dealer. From the, Okay. I just want to know who they were buying. Well, and it's, idea. you can see. I've got two from they're the sort of in the in the back. The last two were in the back. Either. And then he actually had one come back today. Um, from who's this guy, Chad? That's one that came in today. Thank you. Those cat dealers, the ones out of Tennessee and ones out of Indiana. I was going to ask where they were from. The reason for that is once a dealer, once Boyd Cat or McAllister or somewhere like that makes a quote to somebody for a specific vehicle, they won't quote it to nobody else. That's the only reason there's not another quote from Boyd Cat. Is Boyd and Wayne? Boyd is Wayne. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know they weren't Wayne anymore. Well, I still call them Wayne. I'm a little behind the times. <laughs> I still call them. <laughs> How long have they been boy? I don't know because that was Walker for a while. Walker or huh. Wheeler or something. Missed that one all to go. So. I remember being Walker. Larry, that, on that paragraph 1422, it says they were uh, told it could be possible 5,000 or more. Was that something we were told? Or that? On the first page of Mr. Coates' statement, it says 1422 on January 4th. That uh, we were told that these were cost to like five thousand or more. Is that something no. we were told? No. You know, the, only, the only work that I had expected to be done was changing the injector. He's well, first, first, first of the huge one. He's asking you if they knew beforehand that, it, that the part was going to be five thousand or more. That's, that's on, purchase the part mm -hmm. outright, um, at, because that's our policy. Because, you know, we're not here to get rich, we're here to do a fair job. That, that was a saving to us. Yeah, that was a saving so, to us. Right, so, so it's our policy. Anything that's over $2,000, parts are over $2,000, we're 
we offer any any customer the uh, opportunity to purchase it directly so that they don't have to pay our markup. So that saved you all about a thousand bucks by allowing you to purchase it directly. My markup by the way on parts is fifteen percent. I mean that's very cheap compared to everybody else. So what was the so the part was y'all wound up paying what five or six thousand for it? Yeah. And that's what this is for, what was the quoted parts. that the part yes. would be. Yeah, not labor, that's just so parts. really that paragraph doesn't pertain to Okay, that you. Mark. Now I got you. Well well the point of that paragraph is that we make sure real good and sure that that's what the problem is before we have you buy something for five thousand dollars. You know, we don't want to put that in it and that's still not fix it. I mean if it don't fix it then I you know, if, if I put a part on it don't fix it then I that's my fault, and I eat I guess what really got us was, you know, going in, we kind of had a rough idea of what it was going to cost. And Chad has worked on other equipment for us in the past, and if there's something that comes up, he'll call and say, it needs this, this, and this. And when he called, he, he told us the Huey pump needs to be replaced. Then he called back and says, you got two bad injectors. He said, do you want to replace them? I said, no, but I want to replace two. I want to replace all six. Yeah. So, the communication line was there. But we get the bill in for, for other work done. It was kind of. I, I just thought this was a bill that needed to come the, before y'all. The only other work that was done was the, the adjusting the valves. The rest of it is is stuff that you have to do. You know, whenever you you've got a part that ha is faulty and causes metal to get in the lines. You have to clean that out. Whenever you have contamination, you have to clean that out. This one from Thompson's, it lists a fuel tank cleaning, cleaning fuel lines, and bin. Did you do that too? Yes, sir. Yeah. But the I one, didn't see that the on one. The one from Boyd and Caterpillar and, Caterpillar and Bowling Green does not. You know, this this was kind of what we was kind of expecting. Was, was something along that lines there. Yeah. Well, I mean, was that necessary to clean them? That's what I was asking. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's what we're talking about, contamination being in there. The, those trucks are kind of odd. Uh, the high pressure pump, what flows to the injectors on that is not fuel, it's oil. And that's what fires those injectors. Well, when a high pressure pump goes bad, it makes metal in that system. So then you got metal in your engine oil. So that's why you got to clean the oil lines and all that. Your fuel goes through a little transfer pump. Well, in the case of this one, uh, the new transfer pump they sent had a crack in it, which we, so we had to replace that, which was no charge to the city, of course. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't my fault either, but that's just part of my camp. You got to eat some of it. And so we got to look at the old pump too. And the old pump, we actually pulled it apart, pulled it down the old transfer pump, not the, not the one that come apart to start with, but the old one that was on the truck. It was making metal as well. So we pulled the fuel filter off, cut it open, pulled it apart, and it had medical particles, metal, metal particles in the fuel filters. So told us we need to clean the fuel system out as well. If it didn't have, we could have got away just cleaning all the lines and, and changing on stuff like that. But, because we found metal in the fuel filters, then we also had to clean the fuel system, you know. Because the last thing you want, obviously, is to send something out and say it's good, and then it goes down as soon as you send it out. Especially if that kind of money parts. But there was, there was one item, the adjusting the valves, um, that did not, did not strictly have to be done. That's something, it, it is standard procedure, um, because the, how, however you get to it is hard to get to so whenever you've got that piece off you know you check them and adjust them while you're there but that was not um, was not strictly necessary it's under the valve anything. cover of course the valves are under the valve cover mm -hmm. so anytime I have the valve cover off I run a filler gauge under them to check them uh, this truck especially because it's so hard to get to the valve cover and get it on. half the engine sits in the cab and half the outside the cab so I checked them they was out so I went on adjust them that's my fault. I should have called Larry, and, and I told Larry that on the phone. As, as you know, that's all on me. I should have called him, asked him about it. I'm more than willing to, to eat the cost of whatever that is. You know. That was two hundred and fifty-five dollars to adjust the valves. Yes. Mm -hmm. The question is: Is that commission approval thick? It's over your amount that you can prove. Well, it's when it's lined up on the bills. I, I didn't feel comfortable. That, that's what I told Chad. And you know, and, and, and if Chad would have called me and said, hey, the valve didn't be adjusted and we're at this point, I would have told him to go ahead because he was there. But it, it's just the total, the total amount of hours kind of had me back. 
Like I say, Chad, Chad had said before, and I don't know if it's still on the table or not, he would knock a thousand dollars on the bill. That's well, that 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 was in order to resolve the issue okay. and just be done. Tonight, I'm I'm missing supper with my kids, you know, and and we don't you know we don't charge what these these people <coughs> charge anyway. The the cheapest that you're going to get is hundred and ten dollars an hour if you go to any of these other places. And the quotes that he has are apples to apples. So I just find this one really hard because it's. It's not in detail. Does it say in there how much they charge per hour? Are you talking about the Thompson? Thompson, yeah. Um, I thought it was on there at one point somewhere. Or well, maybe not. They um, don't have the hourly no, rate. They just got that one today. I don't think the Thompson one does that. He doesn't show an hourly rate. He just has the... Like, the calls me. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand your hourly rate. Yeah, we just need to be more else, diligent next time. Oh, yes. I'm going to make that more clear. Mm -hmm. Well, again, you're you're not comparing apples to apples. You're comparing one line item because that's how these companies set it up. They they have you know they they would give you an invoice just like this, and it would have all of these additional things. The one that says um, what she's what she's trying to say, if you look at the more cap rope, it says segment one installed injection pump. Um, and the only reason I keep talking about more cats, I've I've worked there for almost four years and all, everybody in my family's worked there at some point. As a matter of fact, the guy working on trucks had spent 19 years for Boyd Cat or Wayne. Uh, but anyway, it's a segment one installed injection pump. Whenever they make quotes and, and they make work orders, they break each segment down. So like segment one would be install injection pump. Segment two would be remove and install injectors. Segment three would be clean fuel system. So they obviously only quoted install an injector pump. Yeah. If they didn't, they would all be broke down in separate segments. And the reason they do that is number one for their for their hourly warranty is what that boils back down to. So instead of having to do different for warranty, they just do the same thing across the board. The other thing is if you send that all out in separate segments and the customer says, okay, well I don't want the valves adjusted on it. Well that's easy enough just to take that one segment off versus reworking the whole work order. That makes sense what I'm trying to say. What about an estimate prior to the work? There's no estimate I'm going to give him. I asked if he wanted a quote, but he specified no, he didn't just fix the I said fix it. I said fix it. Uh, I said fix it. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I've looked at those briefly here, and I, we just, uh, well, I think we need to pay the bill. Just be more diligent in the future when we do this uh, about having things clear. Before we start, so I, I will move that we pay Mr. Coots the bill and then the, and make a stipulation. We be a little more diligent in asking for quotes and getting things down in the future. I'll second that, Georgia. Well, but it'll need it needs to be for all bills because we haven't done any of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You gonna make a motion to pay um, all bills? I move to pay all bills. <laughs> Hold on, we done that. Hey, we already did that. <laughs> we got a motion in a second. All we need is to vote on it now. Yeah. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Those in favor signify the with aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion passes. I'm not showing any old or new on here, so. How about that? Sandy, we'll start yeah. with you. Gosh, Larry, do I have anything I need? <laughs> I haven't been driving around the streets lately. That's usually when I drive around. Yeah, George, if anything came up today. I've heard about Jerry Mays' house. That's you, Mike? I did. Okay. I did not make it up there when we were Because it goes out a lot and stays out. And I noticed there's been some ditch work done, and I appreciate that. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Uh, we had, uh, help me out, uh, Meadows. We started on the ditch there at the bridge at 60, at 231. Yeah. Other uh, round storage place. There about AP storage. Yeah. We're doing from AP storage back to the, uh, I think the first bridge, walking trail bridge. And then uh, hopefully next week, the city will start on the other side of 231 going down to the Taylor Street and then we'll do South Lafayette as well. Okay. So, and I have a feeling my dad and Eric will probably, they cleaned over in the neighbors across the street in our yard because it's 
on it's not city it's on the private property so i sent larry a picture and i said we got new two two new city employees Send so them out. i have a feeling they'll probably do that because you know daddy likes to stay busy <laughs> and eric likes to help him so i have a feeling they'll probably they'll probably do that some every now and then now on south lafayette we're doing on the west side of yes because there's not a ditch on the it's not right. east side, it's a, a minor ditch it's on the other side yeah. of the east. Right. Jamie yeah. Meadows, we talked when he was doing the ditch, when he started the project, he, he thinks a lot of the problem could be the trees that are in the bottom of the ditch that we left from the the amphitheater property called Whit Briscoe Road. He said they need to be cut out or pulled out. He thinks it's stopping a lot of flow. But I yeah. can't place the meadows. What do they own? Uh, Jimmy Beto? Do you know the Beto? I mean, I know all of them, but ER I don't know. ER trucking, they do the yeah. clean out, the excavating and stuff. Oh, okay, okay. I thought but, you were saying they own property there. Well, his, no, Susie's mom and dad. Okay, so, I know where they live, yeah. You're talking about from the amphitheater towards Bruce School Road? I mean, it's not ours. We can't. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Well, a portion of it, yes. I didn't think we went uh, to the, the lower, The lower portion. I didn't think we went to the ditch. Yeah. The lower portion we do, we cross the ditch, we become part of that at an angle. Well, that part we can clean out, but mm -hmm. there's not much we can do about the other. We wonder if we wanted to go ahead and do it now, and I said, well, the ground's soft, we just got everything so down and leveled up, so I thought we'd probably do our office job. Okay. I think I'm good. Charles? Oh, I have nothing new. Kevin? And you know what I'm kind of. Pickleball! <laughs> Okay, we, we've had several drafts of what we're going to do down there. They are coming in mid-April to do the coloring. Would that be the way to say that? The coding. The coding and the coloring the for the park, for the, for the pickleball courts. And Mike and Jimmy Harris got together and come up with a plan on how they want the fencing done. We, did, we got two bids so far in, and they're both less than what, we, what the last one was for sure. And uh, this one for the, it's for the netting and the, is it for the netting and the fencing or just the fencing? It's just the fencing. The netting's coming from the guy at Louisville. Okay. So just the, the, the fencing and it was 21.5 from Josh Titchener. The company he uses. That for yeah, the company he uses. And since I'm in charge of that, I think we need to make that in a motion. I think we need to go ahead and, because we've got to get it in the ground before they come to do the ceiling. And we need to get it in the ground, get the post concrete, get them in there, get them set, get them like we wanted to, do any smoothing up we need to do before we before we do the ceiling. Is that a motion? I'm well, sorry? How much is the ceiling of the course? They're doing that out of Louisville, aren't they? Yeah, it's 11, maybe. Is it 11 or 8? I, it's one or the other. I don't know which one. It's been so long since I talked that, to the, Jesse. The ceiling is the netting, too, isn't it? Yeah, it's ceiling the ceiling and the netting. And the netting. I make want to say it's a little... Make that a motion? Yeah, if, I would like to make that a motion. And that I'll we second. go ahead and accept the Josh Titcher's bid. Because it was the cheapest. Okay. You got a second? Second. We did get two, though, at least? Yes, we got right. them and Diggers over at Owensboro. And Diggers wasn't bad either, but it wasn't... Diggers was 24000 Yes, 24000 Well, is more, of course, with state law now, we, as long as it's under 30000 we can do it yeah. without advertising. Yeah. So. yeah. We had two bids. Okay. And both of them, the, the bid we had before when we added all the gates and stuff in... It was way over 30, and that's why we had to cut back and redo it. So this will get us with this, the ceiling and netting, that will get... It will get... The, it will, this is just for the fence, the 21... Yeah, the that, fence. For the fence. And I know the other was... And the I know coming that, under a different thing, but it's already... We've already been talking... We did. Jesse we passed Henderson, that last... And that's all been taken care of. He's going to come middle of April, and they're going to do it all... In, and he said they'll probably do it in two days. <laughs> but once those two things are done, the pickleball courts are ready to play on. Except we want to put new lights up. That'd be well, the only thing. We got, we got lights, Larry... Larry's going to get us new lights, and we're we'll going to have new poles, and a concession stand, and <laughs> I don't know what all they want down there. But right now, yes, that's going to get us playing pickleball. Okay. That's what I need to wait a couple of weeks, or a week or two after it's applied. Let us say it. I'm not sure on that, really, but it's... Now you want us to build it and close it. Okay. That works out real good, Mike. <laughs> well, like you get on too soon, you can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I would like it to cure a little bit, too, but, you know, let's just now get it all done. Know. Much yeah. Been going on. Yeah. So, but it is that's that's to get it to where y'all play on. Good deal. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. Post same. Motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have anything else?
Kevin? I am done. I, that, that one was enough to get off me for six, eight months right there. Flyer? Uh, well, a date. Uh, all paperwork, I think, has been submitted as of today. Uh, now, I think everything's in the state's hands waiting to hear from them to give us approval to start building the building and pumping water. Good. How much are we getting out of it at the rate? It's rated at 55 gallons a minute through the state, uh, just according to the raw down test. But I think we can still pump about 69 or 70 gallons a minute, okay. which would make us 30% less dependent on the county. Wow, that's good. It's just a buffer. That's, that's it helps. A good thing to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Uh, I have a couple of bills. Yeah, I have a couple of bills which uh, sent out for a couple of jobs that was that work was done and they have not paid. Uh, I don't know if we need to go in closed session to discuss them or probably because they could be litigation. So that's all that I have. They haven't paid us, or we haven't paid them. They haven't paid us. Okay. Av, do you have anything for Georgia? Mike Allen. We're good. Okay. And David. David. Okay. No, hang hang on. <laughs> I'll make sure we get everybody. Okay. And y'all are good. Okay. Now we'll go. We'll come on to you. I thought we were ready for you, Charlie. Miss Miss. Come on, David. Well, they're coming up front. We can hear back. We can hear. That's okay. Oh, come on up. <laughs> These are notes. First of all, I'm Shirley Lindsay. I'm my Lindsay. sister Rita Lindsay Southern. I've been here before. We're the daughters of C.B. and Rava Lindsay of 127 Taylor Street in South Beaver Dam, where everybody knows. Dad passed away uh, 25 years ago, but our mom will be 102 in May. She still lives in this area, okay? I wrote all this down because a lot of people made notes, a whole list of them, and asked me to represent them here, and that's what I'm doing. We're aware, first of all, that that is a floodplain, okay? But mom and dad lived there over 45 years. Water never got into their house until the last three, four years since the amphitheater was built. And the field across the road from us that grows corn every year. Nothing against the farmers, but they leave their corn stalks in there, and for like three years in a row now, it has flooded that area. My mom is 100, almost, almost 102. Rita lives with her to take care of her. They have lost everything three different times. We have hauled truckloads of stuff away and had to replace it, even a floor this time. Yeah. We would like very much, not just us, but the, there was how many people? About 30 different families who's lost everything two or three times. When all it would take would be a little bit of consideration to get the corn stalks up because they drain, they drain, stop all the drains, all the tiles. They're stopped up. The water can't go through there. So we would like very much for the city to do something about it because it's it could be prevented. Most of it could be prevented. And like I said, they've lived there 45 years, longer than that actually, and never had water get in that house until the last two or three years. Mom cannot be moved. We tried that once in one of the floods and we like to lost her as well as a bunch of other people. The water is contaminated yes. and it's dangerous and it not only puts everybody's health in jeopardy, it puts their lives in jeopardy. And we would like very much for something to be done. I don't know what exactly, but some of them suggested having the farmer to till up the corn stalks, put a fence the length of the lot, the property, and keep the corn cobs over on their property if they're not going to, yes. you know. So anyway... I made my spill. <laughs> was the farmer contacted about the corn? What can be done? I don't know, but we need help. Well, I understand, and I talked to two different farmers, not that farmer, but two different farmers this winter after one of the last ones asking what, what can be done. The problem we have, and we're going to reach out to the farmer because we've already talked about it, they suggested the, the disking it up, 
because they said that wood with tilling it, they do no till right. right now. So everything just lays on the ground and they go in and they don't disc they like they used to. They are tilling it now, aren't they? Getting ready to plant. They're doing. I think they're. I think they're doing some tiling too. Okay. That's what it looks like because I, I saw those are those are down there now. I know the tree lines out and fence lines, but one thing would be to get them to do that. I hadn't thought about the fence now. The fence would hold it back and keep it, it from coming through if, if it's a woven wire. They could clean up the corn but that's and stocks uh, instead of all a of point, us. point well taken. It's terrible, and it stinks to hell. Mm -hmm. And don't forget the trash. And, and the I trash. Too. Oh, Go sure. Ma'am. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I live there. She's trying to help me in law. Okay, here's my story. I love it. I love the fever mm -hmm. down. And now, is that city or is that country? It's I got city. told that wasn't the city. You're in pay taxes. You're in the are city. Are we in the city? Yeah. Yeah. You are. Well, I thought I knew where yeah. I was Across at. The, yeah. <laughs> the farm, the the where, we have, where we're running into a bit of a problem is the farm is not in the city. Oh, well, see, I didn't That's, get that. Yeah. But anyway, here's another thing. I'm, I don't think I'm better or nothing. or I'm not against poor people, okay? But here's the problem. Down the street... There's this house that's down in there. Junky cars, they're trash. I don't drink. Yeah. Beer cans thing come up. I have to go out there and pick it up. That's not fair. Well, <laughs> I can say saying. a little bit about that, but I've got I can't say a whole lot because we're there's some litigation coming up with that piece of property. Well, okay. It's we clean. Code enforcement has yeah. been on it. Yeah. In fact, we they had a meeting the other that. night, and it's going into litigation right now. Well, the lady across the street, it was terrible. They, I didn't, I never, I'm not a drinker or a doper. They was in dope. I didn't even know it. And they finally moved. But the city did come down there. And that lady got that mess cleaned up. So. But it's just, <laughs> uh, it's terrible. So you just go down there and spend the day. And when that water comes through there and you're surrounded. And you've got a 101-year-old mom sitting in her, terrified. And she never had to go through this before. It's, uh, I don't know, but I'm up to there with it. So, well, that's so I actually lived on South Lafayette. Yeah. So I, I have lived on South Lafayette. I lived there for nine Miami? years. And I grew up on that. And he grew up on there. Oh. It's flooded down there before. It's flooded. I say it's yeah. a flood. And, but now, I hands. agree, the last few times with the corn stalks, it did it's get That was the worst I've ever seen. That was, it yeah, is. That was bad. But it I'm never. not real sure the rain wasn't one of the worst I'd ever seen, too. No, that's true, yeah. too. I but, agree. Yeah, but I agree. It's always going to hold water. We, and we've tried really to make the ditches as big as we can, and we're trying to get the water out of there. It's just almost impossible with that much water coming that fast. And I, I mean that in all honesty. Flat. Now I, that nine inches of rain was yeah. out of the ordinary. That's, for sure. that's is that the first time y'all really had? I, I know you've had water, but as far as getting in your house, no, it's no. Been three, three yeah, times. Yeah, but that now. was yeah, wasn't that the first one? Few years. No, it wasn't the first. I had to. I lost stuff I had for years. Yeah, because yeah. I know that was yeah. in oh, June of hurt. twenty. Yeah. And we oh. still got a whole floor out. We we don't know whether to fix it because of, I don't want. I, I'm putting money out. Okay. And I don't want to put money out in a money pit to live in to go fix over and over sure. and over. I don't have a lot of money. I'm trying to do it right the best way I know how. That's my story. If I know y'all going to help me, I'm going to go all the way and fix it. Try to. Anyway. Yeah, that's, and I, <laughs> you said y'all couldn't hear what else, so I may go on there. We started this week, was it this, last week? Last week. We started at 231 going towards Bruce School cleaning out that yeah, that I've ditch. Heard about them having it too. And then they're going to come up. Well, but that's all this water goes through there. And then we've got to yeah, come back up from 231 up Taylor yeah. Street to well, Lafayette. And then South Lafayette ditches clean out again. It floods down there too. Oh, yeah. So that would be it, the best way to handle it. It goes. I would think. What we really need to do, if there was a way to do it without an act of Congress, would be to start at Muddy Creek and come all the way around. Mm -hmm. All the water that goes through here comes by McDonald's. Well, another oh, thing. Eventually. Yeah. It goes yeah. to McDonald's. Right. Right. And, of course, you understand because you've, <laughs> you've had to listen to Bill, I'm sure, talk about some of this stuff over the years. Well, yeah. Right, cleaning them out. And, and I know a little bit about it. Yeah. And, but also... Uh, we don't want any hard feelings with oh, anybody no. here. Oh, we on understand the the Like I said, we both lived on that. Like we've dealt with it before too. Oh. But, but at the and same time, my best time, friend lived there, so I was there all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. I remember but, in the seventies, the Smiths, who's the Beddoes in-laws. I remember they had terrible flooding. 
then? Did it get in it's your not, mom's house then? No, in the no. 70s? It's it's the it has never got three. It gets us. Don't yeah. get me yeah. wrong. It gets yeah. up. Right. I mean, it's it was never up. got in it. This it time, the last three times, it's got in it. Yeah. They have hauled off dump, these big dumpsters you read. How many? Four? Uh, five. We had to load all that stuff up, and take it to the dump, and then pay the dump. I, on I a mean, free geez. day, they made me pay everything. And another <laughs> thing, the driveway over there, it's got a big hole in it. we got to get that fixed. Well, we cut down problem. trees. We've done everything, and all for nothing. If y'all don't help us, well, i got to go. I ain't got nowhere to go, though. And Mom don't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we appreciate well, Who's the help? gentleman that lives behind... On the corner there, because I was talking to him in June of 2020 when we had the water almost came in, but in the building right here, that nine inches that, of rain. Yeah, somebody, that was it got problem. in his house that time for the first time in 36 hard. years. Uh, that was the worst one. That was, mm. well, that's where, we, that's where I first realized how bad the corn stalks were, was that well, one. It got into it, I think, uh, once before that time and then this last And one. then, of course, we've had two since then that's done the, right. about the same thing. So, anyway, we would like for y'all to well, consider... We are looking at what our options are as far as dealing it. with the property owner and the farmer. Good. What we can do and can't do. And Well, what's this about them being country and this being city and nothing can be done? Well, they're not in the city limits. Yeah, we can't. I know they're not. Well, yeah. you'd have to go through the, yeah. the, the county I didn't because know of court. Yeah. Yeah. That's something. The city ordinance don't apply much of them. You have to go through the county and the physical court if you wanted anything acted out there. Well, then we'll do that if we have well, to. And but we've also, well. There's yeah. some, there may be some other we've things. That yeah, maybe some other things. I'll get turned. I'll ask Jason Bullock if he can give you a call. Okay. He's some real nice guy. Yeah. I don't know who he is named Larry. What? That's Carter? Yeah. Who's he's that guy? Oh, he's not real nice. <laughs> you said nice guy? Okay. He's not real nice. Y'all just lost all your credibility yeah. right there. You <laughs> just blew it right there. He's turned three shades of red. I've never seen him get that red. I jumped right in. <laughs> he is really nice. Yeah. He was. This guy yeah. called me. Even when I've been trying to get him nice. Yeah. I don't know if I don't know you people. Not well. Well, you know me. You come to my yard sales. I used to have a yeah. do rag on at my yard sales. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But there, are, there may be some things we can do, even though it's in, not would. in the city. There's some things we've already started trying to address because to see what we can there's do. Some, and it's not just my mom and my sister. Yeah. I got a paper there's and about, get it. I got a bunch of signatures here get people. I got no reader. Well, I know because I know uh, Mr. and Ms. Smith, Smith, I know them well. and We've talked about what can okay. be done to alleviate. Well, you know, if you can, we, we would appreciate it because... Yes. Like I said, Mom's old. She wants to stand and we like to kill her the last time trying to get her out. Yeah. And it's terrified her. It terrified her. It terrified all of us. And not only us. I think the David other was in on that. He probably was a little bit nervous about it too. It was scary things. Yeah. You, you, know. you have to remember too that every time it floods at her house, it's flooding the amphitheater or the park down there too. I understand. And we don't want it down there either. I understand. Well, well, so I mean it's all it's, it's all the bomber down there. The park was designed yeah. Yeah. To, to flood. But we still have to help corn stalks and everything well, else. Yeah, but that's just to be cleaned well, up. Well those but. corn stalks, goodness <laughs> sake, they're still we're not picking them up this time. They can stay there and rot. Yeah, you already see our mail. It made us sick to get out there and clean I ain't, stuff I up. I ain't going to do it because I didn't do it. I was so waiting to clean, y'all can do if you mess, clean it up. My daddy, when I went to school here in Beaverdale, when we went to school, we was taught if you tore a people's property, you cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. That's the way we were raised. And that's really all it is about, just trying to make it right. I would them if they'd been us and went on to their property and left a mess. Every one of us would have went over and cleaned. Yes, that was simple as that. Yeah. I do have changed. very responsible. Things have changed over the years, haven't they? I know, but I still easy. got that same junk inside of me. That's why I'm so messed up. <laughs> thank you for your well, thank you all for coming. Thanks for coming. It's good to meet you. <laughs> like I said, you lost all your thank credibility you. right there. I'm, I'm sorry. How much did you pay her for that, Larry? <laughs> He did get off the red though. <laughs> I had a picture of him. Well, you know, I'll I've got we've had the video and everything else. Mountains. It was a mess, especially that one time. It was <gasps> April. Mr. Hall. 
today. I'm small, so I'm not going to step back there. <laughs> you stood up, and I still couldn't see you, so I'm glad you come around. There. So i got to come up here. No offense, Chad, you're not that big, but she's just that small. I'm just that tight. So I am just a concerned citizen. I don't even have parents. I don't even have kids. Um, the age of what I'm going to talk about. My kids are in high school. So, but when was the ball field built? 2010. Okay, so my kids were there as soon as it was built. Um, so I will share with you that it's been the ongoing issue since my kids were there. So we're looking at 20 or 12 years. Okay, it's been going on this long. Um, I'm just passionate about it because it matters to me. Okay, um, the bathrooms and the farmers market. It's, I, I get it. I get it. Believe me. But I'm in charge of the parks, so you know I've heard I'm this story before. There has to be a solution. There just has to be a solution. How do you keep people from wiping feces on the wall and tearing the sinks hang on, off? Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's got to be a solution, and if I got to be a part of helping you find that solution, I will be a help. Help. I will help you. I will help you. If you need a woman on your committee, of your cleaning committee, that you need to send over there that knows what they're doing. Get a woman, okay? Because if men don't know how to clean a bathroom, then let's do something about it. There's got to be solutions. That's like not if his workers are okay, so we there's got to be solutions. We keep the doors locked. The park needs to only be for the ball field. Keep the doors locked. Right now, porta potties. That was my suggestion. Right now, the door is broke. That's because the door in. was locked, okay. and they broke it to get in. They broke it. Okay. So That's I don't know what it will take. Whether they get consequences, whether there be cameras, whether the police it's monitor. It's illegal for cameras. Like, people can't do that. I don't know what it needs to take, but this is not okay. And, and in other parks and other places, obviously they figured it out because they don't have this issue. Well, so yeah, they do too. They do have this issue. Even the county park. We've okay. talked about Bo on a regular basis. He has the same. Problems. Yeah, the the same same problems. Go here. And I agree with you. I understand. Listen. I've been down there and gone in them and looked at them and went, oh my gosh. We, we don't so understand the mentality. What Why? I would tell you right now is right now there are every night there is three practices a night. Yep. They just started last week. You don't know all this. Yes. Okay? Three practices a night, 12 teams a night, that's 120 kids. That's parents up there. I don't know. Think back when you have kids. I'm a mom. I've got little babies. Okay. I've got one on the field, I've got a baby right here. I might have three babies that are playing while one's out on the field. What am I supposed to do when right now that bathroom is disgusting, utterly disgusting? No, 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 you need no, 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 just wait. Okay. Okay. Utterly disgusting. Okay. What is a parent supposed to do? Load up their kids, get in the car, and go to the Dollar General down the street? because it's not being maintained and it's not being taken care of. What? You have taxpayer dollars of families. That is 400 kids. There's 40 teams. That is 400 kids at minimum, at most 480 kids that are on those ball teams. That's a lot of kids. And that's a lot of parents and a lot of siblings that are up there. Okay. So all we're asking is facilities to be maintained and be cleaned and be hygienically prepared and accessible for parents to take their children in there and let them use the restroom and leave. It's April, I'm going to say I take exception to the part that they're not maintained and cleaned. We maintain them and clean them, and before the ball game okay. starts, they're nasty. No, you need to go I, before. We know. So, so we see we, it every day. What do we do? Well, I don't know, but I cannot put a guard in a bathroom 24-7. But there's got to be a We've solution. locked them, and they we tear the locks off. And they break the locks off. And the ongoing problem is literally those well, toilets are black door. right now. They broke the trash is spilled everywhere. The trash cans are nasty. I don't care if you go and empty the trash, the trash can is still nasty. Let's bleach them or let's put bags in them. There's got to be some type of solution. I don't We've care. We've been to be trying a part for 12 years to come up with a solution. Yeah. And it's and, I mean, and it doesn't work. So whatever we're trying ain't working. And that's why I say the only possible way we could fix it is port potty. Shut the bathrooms completely. Well, take them out. Bodies out there. That's sad because you all have exactly. a nice facility. Exactly. And, and, and the, nice the people facility. in this town don't ruin it. They tear it up and destroy it. So do they have? Do they need consequences? I don't know. But you can't catch them. Well, you're not allowed to put a. You're not allowed to put a camera what? on them. What so, can be done? Is there any type of consequence that could be done for vandalism? Yeah, yeah. Or, if you catch them, but there again, you've got to catch them in the act. So how, why are cameras not allowed? It's invasion of privacy. 
It's your property. It doesn't matter. You can't put them in the bathroom. No. Not in the bathroom, outside the bathroom to catch who's coming. How are we going to know which one did it? But you still can't prove they did it when they come out. Hey, you don't have me. You had 40 kids. You're 40 kids. I'm just saying. I can show you the pictures. Okay, so can we get them cleaned by tomorrow? Because there's practices up there five days a week. The, the, five days a week. And right now they are black and nasty. My, my neighbor went up there last week water. with her kid but, for the first time. But we didn't turn, water. is water turned so on today? Can't use the bathroom. Can't yeah. use the bathroom. But see, they shouldn't even, that's why we had them locked last week so they couldn't get in because we did not, I'm wait, no, wait. You asked right. us to wait for you, you wait for me a minute. Yeah. They could not, it's we had them locked last week because we could not turn the water on because it froze over the weekend. We'd had busted pipes. We had the doors locked and they destroy and tear the locks off the doors and go in and use the bathrooms anyway with no water in it. Hey, last, year, last year I had three months, three months of bills down there and it happened twice in the women's bathroom. They'll take the flapper, they'll chain off the flapper, wrap it around the flapper. I had three bills, $1,800 a month for water and sewer. And they'll tear the cameras up and what few times we tried something like that. They'll tear the cameras up. It, it's, but if, they come, if you see somebody come out of the bathroom on camera, you have no way of knowing for sure that person is the one who did it. We, we want a solution. And we we, we, we I do. Get it, I, get it. I get that, I mean, obviously, but there's, what's the missing link? Like, there's well, got to be something. I don't adults know. Adults learning how to act like adults started, and not destroy it. one we started that's, with that's what we teach our children. I know. Farmer's market. What? They cleaned it up on a Friday afternoon, locked the doors, and then came and opened them on Saturday morning. By noon, I'd already got a phone call and had to go down there and look, and the, 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 they were disastrous. And they were cleaned spotless on Friday afternoon. And between the time they opened up at noon, they had already destroyed the bathroom. So who is the... So they've broken, what, a sink off they of broken, the wall? They broke off multiple no, sinks, they off, sinks the off the wall. They broke, broke they, off the wall. Feces on the wall, feces on the floor. I mean, it's, it's the I most... I get it. I mean, I've seen it. And, and again... I've, I've been hearing this for 10 years as well. Exactly. I'm just saying, right now, there are teams up there right now. Like... They can't go to the bathroom. There's moms up there with kids right and we, now that can't go to the bathroom. We put porta potties in at so one place and they turned the porta potties porta -potties over. Potties, let's hurry and get but the they, they turned the porta potties over. So see, we're in a no-win situation no matter what we do. It's I the most horrifying it. thing I've had We've to deal tried. with when it comes to parks. We tried to come and up I, with I a your, Look, I am as much. There is nobody more passionate that, about the park than these people sitting yeah, right up here. I am very passionate. That's one of the reasons I wanted this job in the first place was make sure that place got done right. And and it's beautiful facility. We've gone out of our way to make it nice. And we do something nice, and then they go in there and trash it. And April, I'm, I'm so as just as important as the police monitor important. and drive through the park, like, the, and make they, their They can't be there 24-7. They, they do. do. The thing of it is, like you said, we, cameras could be put outside. How many, how many people did you say goes in there? Maybe yeah. be 40 teams, she said, with 10 at least 10. 400 so, to 480 kids, plus, plus their, their parents, parents, plus and their siblings, parents. plus yeah. their grandparents. Yeah. Okay. And... Drink it's probably, probably not any of them that do it. Yeah. Oh, it's not. No, it's adults it's doing it. It's none of them. Uh, if you've yeah. got 10 people that go in there. Yeah, well, I think it's adults. Got, we know that one was an adult. We just never could catch her. You're not, you're not going to, you're not going to do that. Yeah, it's it's great, great. You can go out to 10 people and interview them. And, well, the, these people that obviously are doing this are not there at the time that the families are there. Right. So it's if there when can. it's dark, it's there when it's vacant, yeah. it's there when it's empty. Yeah. And they're going in there and they're doing this. The only way that that could be a little bit is somebody sits there all the time. Yeah. And when one comes out, walk in and get the door. That's the only way. Well, I mean, could, okay, so. We can't do that. Out of consequences. I mean, think as a parent what you would do to your child as a consequence. Like, if that happens for a month and then they start figuring out, oh, They've got our game. They're they're on our back. They're watching what we're doing. We can't go up there. There's somebody up there. Like maybe you don't have to monitor it after that fact for so long and consistently, but you monitor it for a while to get on their let them know you've got their picture. You're on their pet you know, you're watching them. You're you know whatever, like do you think and the then parent, maybe they would be like, okay, let's go somewhere you know, else. They have, their trouble somewhere else. They have neighborhood watch groups. Do you think the parents would do a watch group where if your kid wasn't playing, you'd go watch the bathroom while the other game was going on? I don't uh, while the game's going on? No, no, not no. while your child's game's going on, while somebody else's child's game's going on. So you wouldn't miss your So that we could have somebody in the bathroom no, at all I times. They do that while the games are going on, but I don't know if that's when all the 
That's when 90 percent of the, 90 probably 95 percent. That's, that's when a lot of the trashing happens. Time and after and a lot of it is. Like we lock them. We lock them at night, the and they still tear them up when they come in the next day. Right. And but so, aren't they locked after the games? Usually. So, so to if they're locked, then the, nobody the locks, can get in. Yeah. Well, they are now because they broke to get, get in. There. Right. To get in. It's, yeah. Yeah. So a way to lock the doors open. You know, if you had them open, is that an invasion of privacy? But because there's so much traffic there, if you had them open. It takes a master key to open them, and they're the same keys at the house. No, I'm saying like you, while it's going on, leave the doors open instead of closed. Even if they're open, they'll still go in there and do it. They'll wait till everybody's out of the room, and then they'll do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Yeah, that's the How are you going to know they're the ones that did it? That's the problem, mate. It's yeah. not so much that we can't. If we could catch them, I guarantee you, Mike oh. would have some having back of a police car going to Harvard. I mean, these are like teenagers that are out at night, late at night, and just jumping the fence and going. You would, wouldn't you, Mike? You put them back. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't believe. I don't believe it's teenagers. I believe it's adults. That's what yep. I, I honestly think it's adults. Yeah. I mean, just. Just honor. And more than likely, not late at night, jump in the fence. Ask some of your other parents if they would be willing to do like a neighborhood watch. I mean, I'm all for it. I mean, I would do anything, like you say, to make it better. Not to where they have to miss their kid's game, or not to where they have to stay an exorbitant amount of time, but say y'all split it up. Like you, do, like you watch your kid play, and then you stay for half the next game and watch the bathrooms, and then somebody come in early and, and watch the other half. Mm -hmm. So that we have somebody in there. I, like you say, right, that may stop it. Nighttime, like what happens They're supposed to lock night. them when the games are over. Right. Again, when they lock them, we can't help if they break in. There's nothing anybody can do about that. Because, right. you, you know, they break in everything. Right? We put extra toilet paper on the back of the toilets. That way, you know, they're not going to be sessions in. Before well, the first game's over, it's out. I mean, they're people steal them. Yeah, yeah, carry them home. And carry them I mean, off. Okay, yes, but we like... Steal it or throw it in the toilet. We had people going in there and taking baths, shampoo, and everything. I don't know, there's got to be... In, Crazy. In that whole other process. It's the, it's the process. Process. I wouldn't yeah. care if they did that. Kevin. I wouldn't care if they did that. Went in there and took a bath. The workers have access to it. Crap on the wall. Yeah, it's the crap on the wall gets me. Who, who in the right mind reaches in there and gets it and then wipes it on the wall? What kind of idiot does that? Y'all, because honestly, I just don't get this it. looks bad on the people running the ball field. And it's not the just parents going up there don't know that it's the city's I mean, it's fault. everywhere. And so they think it's them. It took some effort. You know? It took so time and it took like, somebody. I think some, the people who run it right now had a lot of guts to do that. To help and work and together. Had a thick stomach because I sure couldn't have done it. Where are we going to keep the smell was How are we going to maintain it? You know, let's care for what what it looks like right now. Whether we need to paint the walls, repaint the floors. They said the boys' bathroom smells horrendous. Um, and it, they bleached it. They went in there. They bleached them. They've cleaned them. They still smell horrendous. So like a fresh coat of that really heavy concrete ceiling paint, fresh paint. This, if the sinks keep getting broke off the walls, let's go for a different kind of sink that's not one that's on a pedestal or mounted on the wall. Let's get one that has a base and it's not going to be Broke off the wall 24-7. Yeah, they'll break those two. Well, yeah. They'll break them off the wall because they're sitting on them. Yeah. Sure, but and like that's, that's, one, it's like... That all sounds very fine and good, yeah. but at what point and do we stop pouring all kinds of money into something because they destroy it? Yeah. We have a city to run here. We've got police, fire. Yeah. Yeah. We have budgetary constraints that we have to deal with. And it gets old when you keep spending more money and more money and more money. And then you hear people tell you, well, the only thing the city's interested in is our concession stand. They have no idea how much fencing costs up there. They have yep. no idea how much concession stand building costs. They have no idea what mowing costs. They have no idea what electric and water costs. They have no idea the fact that we right. drag the fields clean. before every game and every day. The and, fix them and, and then they come back and it's like, You're, we want you to the guard the bathrooms. They see, if they would take care of it, we wouldn't they, have this problem. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, don't, I, mean, I knew that when I was there, that wasn't me. That wasn't, I never no. saw that one person mistreating it. But you knew that it was gross, and people don't value something that what? already looks gross. They kind of mistreat it. That's just common sense. Like, you don't, when something looks nice, you tend to want to take care of it, and you want to treat it nicer than it is. You mean, Leave it better than you found it. But when something's so kind of yucky I would, already, I will tell you when it changed. People naturally don't really take care of it. So Tracy and I, I, was, done, like Tracy and I were discussing this last painted, night. Fixed up when the ballpark was at the Beaverdam grade school, the city didn't take care of the facilities. The league took care of the facilities. They took care of concessions. They took care of cleaning and everything. And we kept that place clean. When it changed is when it moved down here and the city took it over and the parents decided it doesn't matter, the city will clean it up. Well, they might be willing to do something. That's, 
Uh, that's why I asked. And I don't mean all the parents, but the group of parents. And that's when it changes. And defensive every time someone comes to it. And I get it. It's an no, ongoing we'll issue. We'll clean it every time, but, but we want to make sure it stays that since way. Since it opened. It's been an issue at the farmer's market since it opened. And it's we've been tried an issue. different so people, things. You know, they just see well, an issue. I get it. But well, we could we could shut it all down and not have a park and not have a farmer's but, market. But I don't want that okay, at but, all. But the attitude to defense is probably where the attitude to defense really, is because people are keep coming like this. It, everybody else is tired of talking about it. Well, it's, so it's, what do we do? We clean the slate. We figure out how do you move forward from this point. How do you make it look good and maybe make it respectable, nice, clean, and not just it was way, yeah. whatever. It is know. clean when they start on it. Like I said. I have gone down there because I mean, we, we spent weeks and we I went down there and, and they the guys came in, they, they mopped it, they wiped the walls down. It was immaculate. I went in the next day and it looked like a bomb had went off in there. Great. And that's not the fault of the city. That's not the fault of the city employees. That's the fault of the citizens of this county that treat that place like a dump. And I mean, for language that, that I, I can't the only use. The thing that I can go back to that is that when something is of quality and not just looking like here's a trash can, it's not, it's there and this is here, but you know whatever. Like okay, could we if there's a way? Like I think more of like a beautification committee. Okay, I'm a woman. I see things differently than just let's. There's your necessities. There you go. So you think if so we just paint and clean it up, that people would take better care of it? looks a little bit more quality and nicer, then people might value it more to where they actually would take care of it better, rather than it's just this and it's cinder block wall and you know it just kind of looks rough and rough around the edges, no and they don't value it, they don't respect it, and they don't mis they mistreat it. I have no problem with painting it and make it look better, okay, but I don't April, think it's April, think of one thing. I'm not saying anything you said is spot on. We are. We try what we can, right. but you know, when things changed, it wasn't. When you were growing up, same with your kids, same with I was. It changed somewhere. If you went in there and made one of those things, what would happen to you? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't care. happen anymore. It doesn't yeah, happen yeah, anymore. No, I get it. I was taught that I, if I leave something or if I go somewhere, I leave it nicer than I found it. And if you yeah. did tear something up, you yes. had to fix it, or you got a whole lot of trouble from parents. Right. Parents now don't do that. Right. And that's a bit more big problem. We could, like, I know that the one who runs it, she's probably the discipline. Could we put, like, if it's a clean slate and it's nice and it's respectable, okay, put up as many things, you know, as many nice signs that say all these things to make them aware that this is a facility we care about, this is something we care about, you know, please do this, do not do this, whatever it takes. You know, well, we're going to try anything well, that work, but we can't have, keep doing the same thing we've been doing. Something to add to this a lot, because I work at an elementary school. Right. You would not believe the number of times I have to call the custodian and say, on the, floor the, on the wall, oh, I know. Uh, pull a paper's clock in the toilet. From school, so we have a new custodian, and we, we have a new custodian, and he's wonderful. And so I called him and I said, Please don't quit. You gotta tell me you won't quit before I tell you what's going on. <laughs> oh, I have, I have so, I've seen those so that in grade school, in those yes. they're nice facilities, yeah. right. and it still happens. They're not teaching whether their it child, be but... little kids doing it out here right. or big people. Okay. Somebody, somebody. Yes. Is. Will we pay anything for using the facilities? No. Well, they should. <laughs> they don't have any skin in the game. Yeah. They're the one. It was the parents and the other than the people that break in at night, but. You know, if it's happening during the games, that, those are the people that are tearing it up, and they have no skin in the game. So why why would they bother? I just got a text from my mother, my my niece Taylor, said there's water flowing in the boys' bathroom at the ballpark right now, right now. So that means somebody's tore it up since we've since been here we've been tonight. Been here. And if they didn't pay for it, at least the city wouldn't be out all the money for all of them. I had three bills last year, eighteen hundred dollars a month for three different bills. And, 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 and April, I apologize if I. Apologize I just want to clean. I clean, guess we, clean, we, clean, clean, we do too. Take my baby and go bathroom and leave. We do too. I apologize if I come off as defensive, but I get really defensive when people start accusing our city of employees of anything. And they do. Especially when they accuse our city of employees of not caring and not taking care of it because that is absolutely not true. They do clean it, they do take care of it, and they do care about it, and it's trash before they can get out of the parking lot. And I have a real problem when somebody turns around and says, well, the city didn't do this. That's where my defensive. And I, 
I apologize for that. Right. Clean on stuff that I wouldn't have touched with a pole. I mean, it's that's bad. And they go in there and they they oh, never sure. say a word. They go and clean sure. it up. They wear their boots and their rubber gloves and stuff. And they and mop, mask and, they and everything. Wipe it off. They do everything they're supposed to do. And when they leave, it's immaculate looking. And within it's 12 filled. hours or tw 24 hours, within 24 hours. And again, I appreciate you being compassionate about it, but there are five, six people on here, counting James, that are very compassionate about it also. Right. And we have tried, we've tried to come up with every other way. Uh, they want to build more bathrooms there. at the at the amphitheater this year, and I said, "Gosh, no, let's just put up porta potties. I don't want to have to deal with any more problems down there." Not as bad. Not as bad not as, bad as the. Bad. Well, right. Too them, but they're not. They're more out of the way. <laughs> The, the ones that I've, if it's a decent one, th they're better than, than these. Do the, and then the porta potty company. I, I've been in some nice yes. porta potty, but then that's a problem. But again, but they turn, they turn them over. We've had all kinds of problems with them too. So I mean, and again, the white bathrooms. I'm the same one. Right. Well, the concrete down by the yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm down. Down. Not not down. Down. Not not down. 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 I'm not saying it's a boy not going in or doing I'm not, it. I'm not against that. Because I'm amazed like how they can contort there, themselves to do some of the things they do in the back. And if we get them stopped, they like you said, once they get like stopped, they know that they're beyond. Right the they make the water run. Yep. I mean, and we might, you know, again, you said something about that. Maybe put it first. Be careful, be careful if you tear up something because we got a neighborhood, we got a bathroom watch oh, like run by the city parents of the of the league officials. But you're right. You know, maybe that will help. I don't know. But again, the the but again the 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 tons of stuff. I mean, and that's work. pretty much, and I, that's again, the space is dedicated to I'm the same way. I'm passionate okay. about it. So, I'm they, it. They, I appreciate they, you being so emotional about it. Yeah. Yeah. I just know. Yeah. And now I'm right there with you. We had a baby. It was like, I got to go back. Yeah, you have to hold him up in the air. Go ahead. And hope you get it. Don't touch anything. And hope you hit the toilet. Yeah, I hope you I don't know about it. I know you don't want to invest in something that's got to get broke. Yeah, we're going to try to make it please. We are going to try and do what we can. Anything else? We'll go ahead and move along. Yeah, we can do that. Oh, they're helpful. Again, I understand. Do me a favor. Well, you have, yes, right. Yeah. Grandson. Mm -hmm. yep. You have a Mark and Robin on May store. No, we have. I'm yeah, yeah. Okay. Your daddy's not here, buddy. I had a Mark and Robin. You can't hear me. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Yeah, I had a Mike yesterday. Oh. Thank you, Jay. My mom's birthday. Yeah, you know, maybe. James Ross So we have, I said, I wonder if that's Lou's recipe. But she said, no, it's actually Just Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on. I'll come down here with you. Next item. Mike, <laughs> you're next in line. <laughs> the other Mike, Mike. <laughs> Mike Nance, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was, I got three of them sitting back there. <laughs> you been a lot of coffee, still trying to recover. Uh, gentlemen and ladies, uh, while I come before the council tonight, recently I was uh, at the, one of our third region basketball official final meetings for the season. They were heavy in discussion of travel ball. Now, I hadn't been kept up with it very closely and did not know how much of an advantage or disadvantage this may be, but a lot of activity within it. In fact, uh, I was chosen and things come up to be part of the group that went down to Muhlenberg County here recently. They had teams that came in from all over the state. They had four schools, or let me back up, they have four gymnasiums. Now apparently, and I didn't know that Muhlenberg County North, as I will always refer to it, had four gymnasiums in there with able to play ball and regular side court. Apparently they do. But what I'm asking to present to the council is that they think about expanding our own facilities. We've got two courts to be around. Apparently this must be drawing way lacious crowds because there's a whole lot of teams and a whole lot of people seem to be interested in 
hey, food, recreation, uh, places for them to stay. I know they all can't stay around here, but even after we need, we need to work on that. But what I want to present to the council is that they think about how do we form this thing and make it something that, that comes here once a month, once every other month, however they do it. I don't know how they do it, but I know that there's a whole lot of interest in it and a whole lot going on. Mike. And, uh, I don't know where you need to get grants. I mean, but I know we need another facility to house at least two more courts. Because, I mean, we could get three courts in the last time when you use Whalen, Middle School, Beaver Dam Elementary. I don't high know school. How, how well it would go over trying to ask the high school to. They'll do it because 20 years ago I had a tournament and I had Beaver Dam, Middle School, High School, Wayland. All four were going at the same time. We went all day long. We had 32 teams in here. And this is in 1998, year 2000, maybe. Yeah. And you've been to them. They're explain. unbelievable. Hardest part is finding enough referees to cover everywhere. Well, that, but but the point is, those are not affiliated with the school. Right. So they are they are. You have to get okayed by the school board. School board is very reluctant now to do that. They'll do it, but they're very reluctant if it's not done by somebody that's involved with the school programs. Well, how do we how do we come forth with that, Kevin? I mean, you're telling me things right now yeah. that, uh, that I know at Charlie, you're at eight. Yeah, he, he knows. He's, we used to have, uh, I used to do what they call the AAU basketball, amateur athletic yeah. team. And I, I've had 32 teams in, in Ohio County on the same day from everywhere from Louisville to Tennessee to Indiana, everywhere up here. And, go, and gym's going all the time. And you play four or five games a day with a tournament at the end of the day. And it's hard, but I had, I was at the time, I was either at the high school or I was at the middle school one. So I had the okay of the, of the school board. It is almost impossible to do it if you don't have the okay of the school board. So you almost have to have a coach that either coaches at the high school, like when Charles was there, or, or, or coaches at the middle school or somewhere where they can be, have access to the gyms. That's it. I wanted, I wanted to pass this along and put it on the table. Something we... It's just it's another athletic event that we can bring locally to our own economy. And obviously, there's a whole lot of dollars spent during that particular time in Ohio County if we can get one in. Uh, well, they had one over here since last weekend, and they're around. I think right now with the way that the economy is running with fuel prices and everything, that's something we can fix tomorrow. Might be able to get something going, but I mean, it is something that we can look forward and down the road just a little bit to. With that. Are you talking about basketball? Because I know yeah. there's yeah. softball, travel yeah. teams, basketball. Yeah. He's talking about using the baseball, gym. Yeah. Maybe say. even football. You you have to have to go board. Board. Yes, go for a board. Because Charles was athletic director out there. Well, I think when I was doing it. Actually. You're going to get the board. Uh, all the gyms. You're going to get the board approval. One, one school that can't man, say that give you their gym. But to get all of them and involved, and it's going to take coordination of it. So, yeah. Well... See, that, see, you're telling me that I just, you know, from the official standpoint, here's what I got and here's what I know about it. But I also see the dollars and cents involved along with the uh, glory and uh, everybody being so happy and we've got something going here, so i got something new. So, hey, you, you've been there. You've been there. Yep. I've just been on the other side blowing whistle. Yep. I mean, that's all I can say about the other thing, but I know that it's there. It's something that we can. Who's in charge of this to making the schedule? That's what I'm yeah. Who spearheads it? That's why I say you almost have to have a coach. Yeah, school. I think who, Charlie, whoever's got the, we got a tournament that's uh, coming up. Maybe they say Henderson. Whoever's over the. So they're independent tournaments. Yeah. But if somebody just wanted to have a tournament here <coughs> one time, they could just get the board approval for one time. One time only. Have, yeah. have so better we, chance of getting that. Getting that may be that may be something that they're actually doing in the way. All right, we're here from this past weekend. Two weeks before, they were over in Muhlenberg County. Now, where are they going to be this next time? Well, are there any teams in Ohio County playing AAU ball or, or yeah. independent league yeah. ball? Oh, yes. yeah. We have a group I know uh, that are third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade age, boys and girls. Oh, yeah. That are involved in it. Uh, 
But uh, I'm, you know, like I say, I'm a little rusty on what all is going on because it's all just kind of jumped well, out there. And, it's all been done before, but and and they got kind of lost for a while, and I I, I, I understand, but. It, it's something good, like I said, it's good for the community, but you're talking about a lot of work. Yes. A lot of people involved, too, because yes. we had four gyms going for 12 hours a day. You had to have referees for games for every one of them. It gets, it, it gets the boosters expensive. Might be boosters might to Yeah, and it's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, it, it seems like any more kids play multiple sports. Yep. And they overlap each other, so I don't know what the answer is. I had a rule. We started out, my, our daughter did multiple, and, and when she was walking around like a zombie, I said, okay, next year you're choosing one. You're well, not going to. <laughs> but there are kids that play multiple game. sports. Sandy, they've been, if you've got a 9 o'clock game, you do your 9 o'clock game, then they're not scared to begin to 11. But they try to get them as close together as they can. They'll they put a game between them. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we did. When, yeah. 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 When, and, uh, His, your son played on it. You know. yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. it's, it's, have, it's fun. I what's agree. that? I have item number two. I have three items. Item number two. Okay. We have what I refer to as a uh, kids or youth gun club through 4 H. Jeremy and his wife, along with one other one, presented the 4 H thing for the last four or five years. Uh, they're and now it has expanded into the high school. The high school themselves has their own shooters group. Now the things I'm seeing there is that I'm actually surprised, astonished, odd, because these people not only are teaching these kids how have gun safety, but these kids are going out there and actually learning how to professionally shoot. I went to one, well, I've been to the state competition in three years. And during that three years, it's actually something to go see. It's actually held in Berea uh, at the uh, Kentucky Fish and Wildlife facility up there. You've got 25 shooting stations out here with five shooters at each station. And these kids are all lined up shooting the clay pits and being thrown out 25 different stations at one time. At any one time, all 25 of them are going. These are the best of the best in the state. Our, our group has been there three times. And I look for them to go back again. Now last fall, they went over to Owensboro to the uh, gun club over there and went into competition with uh, the Bracken County, Murray, uh, Hancock County, Ohio County. I think it was like nine different schools participated and came out number one. And I, I see some kids shoot that I couldn't think about and how well they were doing because I never was that good. Now, I know we've got a problem with the range at the park. Somebody don't like somebody, but there was a kid shooting out there. Somebody says I own it, somebody else says I own it, somebody else is saying I'm not going to let them do it, but I'm not going to do this. What I'm asking for the commission is to take into uh, a possibility with is at the, at the old sewage plant you've got a gift right there that you can line up down through there and have a facility set up properly and it's not going to take that much money you know you talk about the pads parking area whatnot uh our police department can shoot down there too they got to qualify every so often and they have, and uh, I understand we have local instructors and firearms people that are qualified to certify these people. And the same way with the uh, with this trap range. Some of the equipment's already there. We already have it. And I say we, I get drug into this thing with the kids ever so often when I want to or not. The grandparent part? Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. One short one. But uh, anyway, but... Uh, I would ask the city council and the commission to take this under advisement at least and see what you can do about changing this area over down to where it can be used with these kids at the recreational area for shooting and using their trap shoots. With that. Is that anything with that shotguns that they shoot? No, shotguns. shotguns only. Okay. 
uh, that's all that they're, I wouldn't even think about it. Oh, just wondering. wondering. With how, with just wondering. Farm and farms. Yes. Well, we have looked and talked, and there is a rough plan, plan. or an idea for design work down at the old wastewater plant. And shooting was actually one of the things. We had some meetings, it's been a couple of years ago. It all comes back to funding, and a yeah. little bit at a time, we're starting to look it's at the 25-year plan. Though. That Yeah, it was a 25-year plan, plan, I know. Uh, yeah. Look that direction, because we don't have the funds that a lot of the bigger communities right. do. But yeah. that was on there, and the, the shooting was on there. Yeah. There's a little a little knoll also. around the back side, wasn't there, that they talked about yeah. shooting off yeah. there? And archery also. Everything yeah. was down there. Yeah. Now, item number three, and I'll be brief with this, is going to be a parking issue on East 8th by the liquor store. If anybody hasn't driven up from my end down there and find somebody staring you in the face because they dart out around somebody else's parked vehicle or sticking out in the street, hey, you ain't lived. It happens daily, multiple times daily. Somebody's going to get clobbered. It's just a matter of time. And you're talking about a person, not a car. Yes, person and car. Yeah. You'll try to drive up through there sometimes. I have actually been in the middle of the street trying to get around a vehicle that's parked over here on this side. And uh, somebody blasted out. Or somebody turned it off the main street. And then was zipping down through there. And you're looking around at somebody to do it. Now, Larry, is that a, is that a 30 foot wide street? I'm not sure what East 8th Street is. I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, normally the street is 30 foot wide. If you had uh, the vehicles that are parking there at the liquor store are pulling in at an angle. Okay. At any given time, you're going to have six, eight foot of that vehicle probably sticking out in the travel portion of East 8th. Sometimes more. Just depends on how big the vehicle is. I do not, under any circumstances, because that man or any of his people are going to have to run down through there and just check the park. It's not something that needs to be done. If they find it, they find it. They're busy. They've got other things to do right. besides being meter matters. But I do feel like that the council can put some pressure on it in this group to change the parking alongside East 8th Street to parallel parking. I'm not telling them to, re to remove it. Just change the, the alley of it so that we that live or travel that street regularly does not have to wonder when that next car is going to turn in off the, the main street or butt, dart around the building and look, we're looking at it straight in the face. I'm done. Okay. okay. Yeah, you're talking about, okay, the, the angle parking on 8th Street. Can we look at that and see what's. Yeah, we'll check. I'm, that, that's, well, that's something we can you, look I'm at. Just, I don't mean to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Because I haven't noticed. I haven't. And I don't understand people that park with the rear end hanging out in the road. I, sometimes I get in my car and pull it up three or four times. Maybe. Keep from Fair hanging out comment. somewhere. Play with that yeah, I know. You could. I could too. Well, when I, whenever I can. No. <laughs> I can't say what well, I want to say, Mike, because like. you know we're being filmed. <laughs> Mike? Are we? <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to? No, I just, just appreciate it. Your time to Zoom and everybody. And just, a lot of people asking, so I said, well, look. I didn't want to show up like I did care. Oh, yeah. It's sport, but we're very appreciative. Well, I, I called you, but you didn't answer a while ago. But yeah, yeah, did you? Yeah, I did. I texted you, you didn't answer. I was going to answer. <laughs> okay. Lonnie, I saved the best for last. <laughs> you got anything? I'm the corn stalk man. Yeah. <laughs> they told every one of them corn stalk to come off of me. I know. I said, it's 90 no. more acres of corn dirt size mine. I've yeah. got 14. Or I, I don't have a, I didn't have a stock. Yeah. Quarters had me. And got, and got Honestly, Lonnie, I'm glad you didn't say anything because I think it would have just made it worse. <laughs> because I knew it wasn't you, but I wasn't wanting them to get all involved. So. If, uh, if they would uh, clean the uh, landfill up over there yeah. and, and the junkyard, the water could get on out quicker, too. Good point. And, and she talked about her corn stalk. Uh, being in her driveway, the shrub stopped him. She didn't have the shrub barrier went on out. <laughs> <laughs> that might be true too. But I didn't say a word. <laughs> and I appreciate that. No, I, I you can't help an eight inch rain. No. 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 I know. I, I told I told uh, uh, Shirley, I said, uh, Old High River is out of its back. Yeah. Working on a stock hill, Western Landing. Mm -hmm. You know. 
And Greg, remember my dad's house floated down the river in 37. Yep. Oh my goodness. Well, the, the it, hotel down at the, down at the, what was it, the little, what is the name of that place down there on the river toward Rockport? Chiggerville. Sur Chiggerville. Sur right. Chiggerville. Chiggerville oh, yeah. hotel's gone. Well, yeah. And they, they just sucked it right off face of earth. So, yeah. You, you we had a flood. You can't stop the good Lord from seeing this stuff. When that first rain she's talking about, and I, I remember the date because we were supposed to be having a wedding shower in here and water was coming in the front door, yeah. June 29th, 1990. That was a bad I've been ever since 82. And it's the first time, that, uh, as 18 train, yeah. uh, it's the first time water ever got in my shop when we got in there about a half inch or so. Yeah. Just, no. But water's been over the road over where she's at several times since I've been. Yeah, I mean, and it's been doing know, that for years. Yeah, since I was there in the 80s, I was in there in the 80s. I moved. Out, I think I moved in my house in 81, and I I was there all through the 80s. It did it in the 50s. And yeah, I know. My grandmother yeah, lived in 516. Yeah. Yep. That's all I'm saying. Appreciate that. Okay. Appreciate you coming. We hadn't seen you in forever. I don't need to be. Thought you got mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> We need to go and close the session. He said we did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm we did. Thank you, Lonnie. I appreciate I that. that. So, Sandy, you just yeah. jumped in from a second. I appreciate your cleaning out that dish. Well, y'all giving me a tension <laughs> headache. Well, and hopefully we can do on further <laughs> out that way at least. <laughs> if we got a motion to go and close Yeah, Sandy made it and I second Oh, good. Larry? We'll try. Call him. <laughs> it's going to be fast, though, right, guys? Hey, I'll stay out here if you want me to.